Let's welcome in Tampa Bay Bucks defensive end Lawrence Sidbury, who joins us live on the Dish Hotline. Thanks for taking the time for us today, Lawrence. How are you? Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. How you guys doing? We are doing very well. Briefly talking uh, about Jameis Winston being thrown into the fire. Have you had any interactions yet with Jameis? Well, in passing, you know, right now we kind of split up off of the defense right now. You know, the CBA doesn't allow us to, you know, go against those guys right now. So when next week starts up, we'll be in our OTA phase. So I'm sure I have a different answer for you next week. What what will you be looking for, Lawrence, when it comes to this is the guy that's supposed to be the new leader of your offense, he's supposed to be your quarterback. What will you look for to judge whether he's up to the task? Uh, well, I don't think I'll be judging him. I think everyone here just will be, you know, supporting him and trying to you know, help him as much as we can. Uh, obviously, want him to see, want him to see, want to see him do um, the best job he can do because to help the overall team do better. So uh, none of us be judged. And we well, encourage all our teammates to do good. I, think, I don't know that's what you were getting at right there. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't, I don't, maybe judge is the wrong word. But just sort of when, when you're trying to get a feel for how quickly he's going to be able to, to assume the task or get the job done, what do you look for in getting a feel for where he is and how quick, quickly he can adapt to the NFL? Well, honestly, I might be the wrong person to ask that because I don't worry about how to get to the quarterback. So, I, you know, <laughs> well, opposing, opposing quarterback, I'm hoping hope that they can't get the ball out and the footwork is bad. But, you know, right. we, we want him to do, do his best. It's like any rookie that comes in. I've been a rookie before. Just how quick you can uh, make an adjustment to being a pro, no matter what position you play. So, sure. we all have a responsibility to just come out and be on our P's and Q's, learn the offensive defense, and, you know, try to get the speed as fast as you can. What is the biggest adjustment going from college into the NFL? Uh, well, personally, on the D-line, with the opposite, everyone's moving a lot faster. Um, I'm being, you know, being in, the, in the box is a lot more physical than it was in college, so making that transition uh, was pretty big for me as well. But it's, it's gaining your confidence, I think the sooner you can gain your confidence in what you're doing, uh, the faster you can make a transition and play more effectively. Hey, Lawrence, I don't know if you heard, but the NFL cares about uh, defense again, and they're tilting things in your favor. They just moved the PAT back, and they're allowing two-point conversions to be returned if the defense recovers the ball. Uh, in, in all seriousness, what what sort of impact do you expect this rule change to have? Dude, I don't know. I, just, I saw it briefly eating breakfast this morning. We were watching, and uh, I saw that come up on the ticker on the bottom of the ESPN screen. Mm. I mean, ultimately, I mean, there's not really – that much of the game is really not going to change it, except for uh, being able to return the ball. That's different, which I didn't know. I just found it out just now. But, you know, we still got to go out and try to block the PAT no matter with, you know, five yards, 15, 50 yards. So, I don't really know how much that's going to change for us. Lawrence, Sidbury Bucks defensive end on the phone with us right now. How many turns of the deflate gate story have you followed? I mean, it seems like every day there's something new. Are are you paying attention to this? Is this on your radar at all? No, honestly, man. When I see it comes up, come up on the screen, I just turn the channel. And it's, it's always on CNN, Fox, Fox, MSNBC, and all this stuff. I'm like, man, this is like really a big deal. They've been talking about it for so long. I just I honestly just turned the channel because it's not going to change anything. You know, those guys won. They won Super Bowl. They're Super Bowl champs, man. That's all you can do about it. Lawrence, through the course of through the course of a game or course of your career in playing, have you how 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 often are you in contact with the ball or you're conscious of just the condition of the ball? I mean, whether it's slippery, whether it's scuffed up, whether it's inflated, whether it's a little soft, whether it's hard, like how how often does that even come into play, especially for somebody in your position? I think I think for me that that might be geared towards more somebody in the secondary or playing at the linebacker level, you know. Yeah. You know, we watch the ball to get off the ball. I mean, I scored a touchdown, you know, stripping the ball from someone as a rookie, but other than that, you know, defense line, we really don't touch the ball, you know, unless we're stripping it from somebody or trying to strip the quarterback when he's dropping back the pass. Um, and yeah, I really didn't have much of an effect on us up front. And so there's nothing like even when you're like in the course of a game, you see a, a spiral or you see like 
you can't even – there's no way of reading that in the course of the game not, whether there's something the different with the ball, right? We're not going to look and say, hey, this ball looks a lot, a little flat. In the right, or right. It. Oh, it's a little easier to strip them. I mean, we're just not yeah. – we're just not, we just not thinking about that. We just don't – you know, we don't touch the ball enough, uh, you know, to really afford to really affect us in that manner. If, if you did intercept a deflated ball, do you think you'd be able to tell the difference? Um, you're really trying to get me with the deflate gate and stuff. No, no, no. I I'm, you know, like, you no, know what? I, we're no, beating the death no, no. out of it like everybody else is probably. No, I, I, no honestly, if I had a second the ball, I'd be thinking about scoring. I probably wouldn't be thinking about whether the ball was inflated and that. that right. Honestly, kind of true. Fair. It's not every day that the I'm not uh, asking another deflate gate lineman. question, I promise. <laughs> not every day the defensive linemen get to touch the football. It's a big, big honor. You said you had one touchdown uh any any other big plays that come to mind uh two balls that are dropped <laughs> yeah. that should have that's been a, I had a couple of those. That's, that's as exciting as it gets uh i understand that you have a lot of work with the boys and girls club uh in or excuse me big brothers big sisters of tampa bay yeah actually this is uh the third city i've actually been working with them. Uh, I started off uh, my last year in Atlanta with the chapter in uh, Greater Atlanta. Then the one year I spent in Indianapolis, uh, worked with uh, that chapter there. So now that I'm here, and actually I reached out to them last week and went over and met with the director. And we got some pretty good things coming up. Uh, they do some great stuff. Uh, mental, you know, you have people taking their time, you know, mentoring kids, spending time with someone who just may need a little bit of help or a little bit of assistance. And, uh, you know, they screen, you know, they screen candidates very thoroughly. It costs, I think, $1,275 to fully screen, do a security search on someone who's, you know, going to be spending a lot of time with someone else's child. So it's, it's pretty important. But, you know, the impact on it can be lifelong. And I've heard plenty of stories just of kids, you know, they didn't have this program. You know, they don't know, they don't know where they would be. Hmm. Uh, before we let you go, uh, so last season, rough season, what – with the addition of Jameis and some of the other improvements that you guys hope to make, where 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 do you set what what do you consider a, a fair bar to hit, or what would be a successful season for you guys next year? Well, honestly, we're not you know we're not even talking about last season right now. I think we had the same goal as everyone has. That's to be playing in San Francisco. That's what's the goal. In San Francisco, you know, at the end of the season, uh, and last year is my rearview mirror, and I haven't even brought it up. Honestly, you know, until now, not that it's, not that we just it's, not that it's coach speaking, we don't want to bring it up, but you know, last sure. season is last season. We moving on, you know, to this season. So we can come out and try to win as many games as possible. We want to win the division and eventually get the Super Bowl, just like everyone else. With that in with that in mind, if there's one thing that you think you guys have to do this year that you didn't do last year, what is it? What's 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 that thing that's going to get you closer to San Francisco this year? Play a full 48 minutes. I think we come out, I know, you know, come out and play hard and execute. Play a full 48 minutes and, and, uh, and finish. You know, we should be on the other uh, side. Lawrence Sidbury, thanks so much for your time. If you're in the Tampa era, he has, he has the Bowl for Kids Sake fundraiser on Saturday, May 30th. Check it out at Lawrence Sidbury uh, on Twitter. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, there's. Not not a lot going on with James Winston yet. I did I didn't think